Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another round of sound. This is the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown. I'm Bob Pompiani. Thanks for staying up and get set for some big time opinions. We have some great topics tonight, including who will have more catches in 2019, AB or Juju. We'll also talk about the call last night in the Auburn game against Virginia. But the number one topic tonight on the number one Cochran Sports Showdown will be the Penguins, who moved on to the postseason for the 13th straight year, the longest such streak in the NHL. It's the Penguins and Islanders. And here to break it down is your panel, left to right on your television screen, Andrew Filipponi from the PM team on 93.7 The Fan and his national radio show. In the middle, it's Mr. Ron Cook, outstanding columnist with the Post-Gazette and 93.7 The Fan, The Cook and Joe Show, and then Paul Zeiss, who does a little bit of everything, including his uh, column in the Post-Gazette as well as his Paul's Ice Show on the radio. So we're talking about this matchup. It looked at one point last night, gentlemen, like it might be the Capitals and the Penguins after the Rangers have stormed back with two goals. Gensel bailed them out, so they get the Islanders, and they start on the road. So I want uh, to get your thoughts on this matchup, Andrew. And the fact that it's on the road, to me, in a weird way, benefits the Penguins, even though I like home ice. Yeah, I think it's a contrast to Styles' matchup, and I'll favor the Penguins because they've got pedigree and experience. But if you believe in the old adage that defense wins championships, it's not a great matchup for a team that has struggled to score goals late in the season. The Islanders come in with uh, the team that they gave up the fewest goals in the NHL this year. So by definition, they are the best defensive team. And I think that could play into some of these games where you're going to have close, low-scoring games, and that might lend itself to a long series. Well, I think the biggest advantage the Penguins have is in goal. I'm not even sure who's going to start for the Islanders. They've both been very good, and the team has played well in front of them, as Andrew pointed out. But Matt Murray, to me, is playing out of his mind right now. Uh, he has been so good for so long. I mean, they went 10-3-3 and in, in the month of March with – Latang playing three games. I can list all of the things working against him, and he almost single-handedly got him into playoffs. I like the way he's playing. I know it's an if if he stays healthy, but I think he can carry him a long way. Yeah, I mean, I think obviously star power, the Penguins have that advantage, and you know, if they get their offense moving a little bit, but to Andrew's point, this is a team that the Islanders are a team to me that are going to be a sneaky pain in the neck for the Penguins to play against. You know, I heard so much about Tampa and Washington and all these other teams. I, I think the worst kind of uh, uh, first series you can have is against a team that plays this kind of way, the, the way that the, the, the Islanders do. They can make your life miserable, and you get behind in a game. It, it can You're be right. a long, long game. It, it's almost like playing New Jersey, and it's ironic because Lulai Morello is the GM there. I think New, New York is different when they have a lead versus when they don't. And the Penguins had that issue two years ago when the Senators would get a lead and go into that 1-3-1 one, one trap. But, Bob, I'll pick the Penguins to win this series because where are the Islanders' goals going to come from? That's they, my they, point. They missed John Tavares. You know, they had a great season without him, but they didn't have a 30-goal score. Anders Lee at 28. I just wonder in this series, you go tit for tat with the Penguins, are they going to have enough firepower? Plus, Ma Matthew Barzell, who is their 21-year-old phenom, has had one goal, I believe, in his last 28 games. That has to change. He has to do something to carry this team in this now second season. Ron, I want to ask you about your biggest concern of the Pittsburgh Penguins going into this series. What would it be? Well, I I'm still waiting for Kessel and Hornquist to really get going. Uh, even strength just haven't done much. I think Kessel has been a little bit better. I love the Penguins' defense. I think they're going to have a real tough decision made uh, when Dumoulin comes back, who to sit out. What a change that's been from the past couple of years. I love Murray in goal. Uh, I'm more worried about Kessel and, and Hornquist. Uh, they got to get it going for me, and they haven't. Well, I'll say, the, uh, piggybacking off what Ron said, you know, if, if this is not a special team series, Bob, that's where all Kessel's points come from. So he's got to be a factor at even strength. And if the Islanders load up to stop the Crosby line, where is the secondary scori scoring coming from with the Penguins? I know late in the year, Cullen found a scoring touch a little bit. Bluger was a bit of a revelation. So was McCann. But are those things going to have carryover into the playoffs. If the second line, if the Malkin Kessel line isn't effective, then I do think the Penguins are going to have a hard time going deep in this tournament. Yeah, I mean, I think obviously the obvious things that happened in the last month or month and a half with this team are there. Um, to me, if you really take a look at the way they've played, uh, I think that the way that games are called 
in the playoffs actually might favor the Islanders a little bit, and, and, and especially if they swallow the whistle like the way they do and there's not a lot of power plays handed out. I think that favors the Islanders in the way that they want to play. And they have Valtteri Filppula back. He had missed a lot of games. He had a couple of goals last night. He is one of their best penalty killers as well. Real quick, guys, I'll ask you this. Uh, if this defense, Ron, you brought it up. Uh, they have a lot of guys. When Dumoulin returns, who sits? Give me a name. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't want to see any of them sit because I like the way they're playing, and I don't think it's fair in life to sit one, but life isn't fair. Has to be Mata for me, I think, uh, and I think he's an outstanding defenseman, but they like uh, Good Branson's physicality. They love the, the size and reach of Pedersen. They're not going to sit the other four. I'm thinking it's got to be Mata. I think that's the right choice, too, because of the matchup, Ron. It's a new New York team that isn't the most fleet of foot, especially when you get into – their third line and fourth line players, they're a heavier team at the back end. So if you're going to have your third pairing on the ice, a lot of the time favorable matchups in theory against the third line and the fourth line, I think in this series you want to start with the more physical player, and that would be good Branson. But it shouldn't be set in stone. I know Jack Johnson hasn't sat a game this year, and I don't think that'll change. But guys like Mata and Good Branson, it should be a meritocracy. If you play well, you, you stay in. Absolutely. But you know what? These things have a way of working themselves up. Both years when they won the Cup yep. uh, in, in 16 and 17, they needed eight. And that's not even counting Latang, who wasn't there for the second one. So uh, you're, these guys get hurt. It's just all part of it. You're going to see all of those guys. I just think they feel really good about their depth at this point. And that's the thing. That's what exactly what I was going to say. I don't think it has to be uh, an either or. I think it's night by night who you're matching up and how are you matching up and who's playing well. And that, to me, is a luxury that they have, especially if they all stay healthy, because they can really match up with but, the other teams. Paul, to that, but like they do have good depth. But if Dumoulin's not healthy, we saw the way late in the year when Latang was out and Dumoulin were out. I think the way that top lines, like look what Detroit's line did well, that game there. And excuse so, me. They're hopeful. They're they're was it, wait, wait, no, Wasn't Dumoulin's the question playing. though if Doomlin's back? No, I know. I know. No, I know. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. Doomlin is supposed <laughs> to be <laughs> back. <laughs> so right, I, I, I wasn't trying to be critical. I no, just no, no. I just was making sure I wasn't going it, crazy. It looks like they have good depth, but at the top they might be in trouble if Doomlin's not. Happy. I have 30 seconds. Give me a name who emerges from the East. We know the matchups in the Atlantic. We know the matchups over here. I still think Boston will emerge. Gentlemen, start with you, Andrew. Who do you think? Well, I'll take chalk and say Tampa just because they're the best team since 95 with the wins record. But I think Carolina's a sleeper. I think they're playing with house money. They can really skate. I think they're a dangerous team. I think they'll beat Washington in the first round. You're, you're, you sound like Pompey Annie. You're picking multiple teams here. That's what Bob always just does said, until he one gets team? one right, you know. Where do you I'm get my Tampa's master's not pick tomorrow? Fun, Ron. Uh, I, you know what? I love Tampa, too, but I'm not going to pick them. I, you know, it's like I didn't pick Duke to win the national title. Everybody else seemed to. pick Kentucky. To. Uh, I, I did pick Kentucky, and I lost. Um, I, I like Washington champions until proven otherwise. I'm not going to write them off. I think they're going to be a very hard out for anybody. So that I don't get a bunch of emails tomorrow, I'm going to say the Penguins. I, I pick the Penguins. You, you two will get a bunch of emails Over. from angry people if the Penguins win. I won't because I picked them. Yeah, they can win. There's they no can. doubt. They are loaded to do it, and it's just a matter of how the matchups work. We'll see. It all begins Wednesday on Long Island. When we come back, we're going to talk about the Pirates. We saw a little bit of a brawl action today. But first, let's talk about a major move that's just been made. The former Kenny Ross Chevrolet and Nissan and Zillian Opel are both now part of the number one Cochrane brand. This is number one Cochrane's first ever Chevy franchise and Nissan store it's number four and right now you get grand opening by lease offers plus an extra one thousand dollars over KBB for your trade it's only at the new number one Cochrane Chevrolet and the new number one Cochrane Nissan Cranberry we'll be back with Pirates Talk next the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown is brought to you by number one Cochrane go one better and by Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield. Have a greater hand in your health. 